All right, guys, welcome back to TCI headquarters. Time for us to preview a huge game Saturday night, uh, Tallahassee. Environment that can get a little bit crazy the way the bowl's set up. It's not quite as loud as you would think with the the size of the stadium, but it'll be uh, it'll be rocking. Florida State's certainly got best team they've had in a few years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Certainly going to be a challenge for the the Tigers. Let's go through and talk a little bit about what the keys are, and then we'll give our predictions. Davis, what's some of the things you're looking for as far as keys? Well, first thing I think is that Clemson has to get off to a better start because you, you mentioned the environment. I mean, not another primetime kickoff at night. Um, Florida State fans are going to have all day to, let's call it, marinate. Um, so it, that place is going to be raucous um, at the at least the beginning of that game. And But if you can get – if you can start fast, you know, you sort of take the crowd out of it a little bit. Um, but if not, I mean, I, I think Clemson is going to be in a, in a real dogfight. But it certainly would help their, their case to, to, to get off to a, to a faster start, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, sort, and like I said, sort of try to take at least some, some of the crowd out of that, um, you know, make it a little bit easier to, to operate down there in, in hostile territory. But I think the, the bigger key to me long term is, is – making Florida State's offense one-dimensional. And a big part of that is containing Jordan Travis because we all – I mean, he's maybe the most athletic quarterback. I think he's certainly – well, Malik Cunningham maybe at Louisville may have something to say about it. But one of the fastest quarterbacks um, in the ACC. And, you know, Clemson did a really good job with that last year because um, that, that's what they did. I mean, there were a lot of plays where whether it be design runs or, or him scrambling out of the pocket, you know, there were times he tried to – take off and didn't have a whole lot of success yeah, in that game doing that. Um, so, I mean, they, they need to be able to, to do that again. Um, you know, we'll see what Florida State's running back situation looks like. Trey Sean Ward posted a social media a social media picture of him in the hospital. So, you don't know if he's going to play. I, I doubt he plays this week. So, maybe down um, some personnel in, in the backfield. So, um, but I, I think – and some people may say, well, wait a minute, Clemson's pass defense hasn't been very good. Why would you want them to – force him to throw the ball all the time. Well, we mentioned in a previous video, this is the most complete that Clemson's defensive line, I think, is going to be. Again, barring any setbacks during this week of practice, they're going to have a full deck for the first time all season. And I think if, if if you make Jordan Travis drop back 35, 40 times, first of all, that's not really his game. Now, they're, they've been better throwing the ball mm -hmm. this year than they were last year, but that's not – that's that's not what you want for, for yeah. if you're Florida State is him passing the ball 40 times and I think I think if you do that the more times you can get him to drop back the more chances you have not only with your pass rush but just some different things um, and coverage that you can do to, to force some force some issues put some pressure on him force some mistakes force some more turnovers um, so I, I I think that that's but I think the number one thing there is is being able to keep him in the pocket, keep him contained, and, and not let him rip off some of those those long gainers that going back to the environment, you know, you pick you know some of those big plays, and then the crowd gets back into it, and it's, it, sometimes that, that thing can can sort of snow, snowball on you. So um, that, that's the biggest thing in my eyes. Sam, what's yeah, uh, I think it just, I mean, obviously it's coach speak, it's player speak, but it's Clemson not beating Clemson at the end of the day. Um, I think one of the biggest factors, though, is they got to be able to run the football more effectively than they did against Boston College. Yep. Um, you know, that, that was something they obviously weren't really able to do until that final drive of the first half, and then they were kind of able to do so a little bit more in the second half. Um, I think DJ ran for 69 yards, and then Shipley and Maffa combined had 69 yards. So you probably want to see a little bit more than that. I mean, DJ 12-69 is, is yeah. a good stat line for him, but you probably want Shipley and Maffa to have more than 69 yeah. yards combined. Um, so I think they're going to need to really just kind of hammer home that run game and, and, and be able to run the football effectively because when they have been able to put up points and, and be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of these mm -hmm. good defenses, it's, it's definitely because they've been able to run the football and do so effectively. Um, I think Boston College did a really good job of, of neutralizing that run game, and, and you saw how it frustrated Clemson. They punted four times in the first half. DJ threw an interception. Um, obviously, once they were able to kind of get it going, the offense had more of a rhythm to it. They scored 21 points in the second half were able to kind of, you know, rifle off a couple more explosive pay, plays. So Florida State probably has one of the best defensive fronts that Clemson's going to face this season. Um, they obviously had one of the better ones they faced last season, mm -hmm. and they've since graduated Jermaine Johnson, who's now on the New York Jets. Um, <laughs> had to get the Jets. How are they doing? <laughs> had to. Uh, but <clears throat> he, obviously he, he made a big play in that yeah. game last year. But, um, you know, they have another transfer defensive end that, that is – played really well there and 
their defensive line is probably yeah. the best one that, or one of the best that Clemson is going to face this year. Uh, so they are going to yeah. need to. I think it's the best they've faced so far. So far, yeah. Um, that, they're going to need to be able to run the football, and that's going to be without Kobe Pace. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he's, I think he's down maybe three, four weeks. Yep. So you're probably going to see a lot of Will Shipley and, and Phil Maffa. Um, I think Shipley only had like ten carries. There's Boston mm-hmm. College, so maybe they're going to want him to get him more involved. Um, maybe more some design quarterback runs, but yeah, if they want to beat Florida State on the run uh, on on the road, they're going to need to be able to run the football and do so effectively. Yeah, no, that that's a good point. And running it north and south specifically, because even Dabo mentioned this earlier today. You and you mentioned their defense line, but their front seven as a whole, yeah. including that linebacker group, that's the fastest, most athletic athletic group that they have seen so far this year. I don't think you're going to do a hold off sideline and sideline. No, against Florida State's defense, you need to be able to run the ball north and south between the tackles. I'm gonna flip a little bit what you just said. <laughs> One of my keys for Clemson is going to be their linebackers, their athleticism that they haven't had there the last few years. They've had some great players there, but not necessarily yep. the same athleticism. I think that's going to be key going off of what some of you guys yeah. talked about as far as containing the quarterback when he does decide to scramble. Um, it's helping with the, the tight ends, making sure those guys don't get loose on the, the short stuff to, to give him the easy outs. But, you know, you got those Avengers, they're all back. Um, they're going to have to stay in their lanes. Mm-hmm. They're going to have to contain. Um, there's probably going to be times when they he breaks containment, yeah. and then it's going to be up to yeah. those athletic linebackers to, to, to make those stops. So I think that's going to be one key. The other key for me is how does DJ perform in this environment? I hadn't played in this kind of environment yet this year. Yeah. You know, Wake Forest is Wake Forest. I mean, there were a lot of Clemson fans there. They yeah. had a you know pretty full stadium, but it was just not the same environment last week. Uh, you know, pretty full stadium there. Mm-hmm. The students are right on top of you, so that gives you a little bit of feel, but nothing like what he's going to see this week. Uh, last year, you know, he, it was a different DJ, but didn't play real well up at Pittsburgh in yep. an environment that was, you know, not necessarily the same, but similar. He played well at Notre Dame a few years ago, but that was, you know, just different situation. So there's going to be some adversity. Yeah. Uh, so the question is going to be how does DJ handle that adversity if he handles that well, then I think that bodes real well for Clemson because I think the defense will do, do yeah. their thing. No, that, that's a good point because, um, you know, it's something that you've seen early in this year, while DJ's obviously been much better overall mm-hmm. in terms of, of how he's performed compared to last year, it's been the, where the games have been tight, where he's sort of had one, those one or two really ill-advised. I mean, you think back to the la- just last week. Mm-hmm. I, mean, that, that, I mean, that was the worst interception he's done all year. I don't really – he said he was trying to <laughs> – throw it away but it didn't get there and it just really bad but that I think it was a three to three game at that point yeah mm-hmm. uh, so um, that's that's a really good point and it goes back to what I said earlier about getting off to a faster start if you, if you can get you know a score two ahead early you know it takes off some of the pressure but if 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 they don't then you know how much you wonder how much DJ might start feeling the pressure and try to force some things so yeah, that's that's definitely a, a key that I, I had not thought about. But. And Shipley's kind of taking the pressure off of him at times this year. Yeah. Just said, beast mode, I'm going to take the team on my back. We've seen that. That may not work this week. So, yeah. DJ's going to have to be the, the guy that does yeah. the right things to get rid yep. of that pressure. All right, let's talk about predictions. Okay. Um, Davis, what you looking for? I think Florida State's going to create some big plays in the passing game. And, and one thing that's – you talking about the six ten receiver? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> How did you know I was going to go there with that? Stop that. But Johnny Wilson, transfer from Arizona State, six foot seven, so not quite six <laughs> ten, but certainly a lot taller than any DB that Clemson has. I do wonder if that may force them to play more cover three, cover four, just sit back. Most likely. Because I mean, jump balls have not been kind, and one on one have not been kind to Clemson's corners. Um, so that's going to be interesting. So I, to see how. Uh, Wes Goodwin decides to implement his coverages this week. but So, I, I do think Florida State's going to make some plays. I think Clemson's offense can make some plays. I think the difference in this game is going to come down to Clemson scoring touchdowns in the red zone and Florida State kicking field goals. Because I, I do think I do think Clemson's defense is just – it's better um, than Florida State's overall. I think Clemson's the better team. Um, I just think they'll – I think they'll force them to settle for three more often than seven. So I, I think ultimately, I think that's the difference in the game. So I'm, I'm going to go Clemson 27, Florida State 19. I'm kind of on the same wavelength with you in the terms of the, the point scoring. Um, I think Clemson obviously is the better team here, but I think this is going to be the most physical, close game they're going to mm-hmm. play all season or, or right or so far this season. I mean, Wake Forest was close, but it, it didn't need to be as close as it was. 
I think this is a game that's gonna you know it's gonna be back and forth. I think yeah. I think really the battles are gonna be won in the trenches, and more importantly than Clemson's defensive line playing well is the offensive line being able to play to its capabilities and, and how we've seen it so far this yep. season because of just how good that Florida State defensive front is. I think Clemson's defensive line is going to make its money. It's going to do what it needs to do. They did a good job of containing Jordan Travis last year. I still think he'll make some plays, and I think you know he can with his legs. He's elusive, and maybe some of those will evolve you know, to some breakdowns in the secondary. Yep. But like I said, I, I think Florida State's going to score some points. Clemson's going to score some points, obviously. Um, but like you said, it, it kind of coming down to which team is better in the red zone. And Clemson has been really good in the red zone One of the this best year. In the country. And their yeah. defense has been very good in the red zone despite all, a lot of the points that they've given up this year. Um, and and they, they, they did that against BC. I think BC was 1-2 of two in the red zone. and um, Or maybe 1-3. Yeah. They You know, one of them was just a field goal. They missed another field goal mm-hmm. and then had a pass dropped in the – or broken up in the end zone. So, I think I think – the key, like you said, is the red zone, and I think Clemson just has kind of has that advantage. I have Clemson winning twenty seven to twenty two. I think that this is going to be a game that, that's going to be close at halftime. And but if Clemson, you know, <laughs> doing what they've been able to do and have that middle eight where they yeah. go into halftime with the lead and then they come out firing, I, I mean, I think that'll give them the momentum that they need. But they, like you said, they do need to come out and, and start fast, whether whether it is that they lead at halftime or not. They yep. need to start fast. All right, I'm gonna play a little bit off the FSU. Wake Forest game. Wake Forest had a pretty good lead there. Mm-hmm. And then Florida State came back on them a little bit. So, I think what we're going to see is we're going to see Clemson get that lead. But I don't know that Florida State's going to be able to, to come back uh, quite as much as they did against Wake Forest where they, you know, made that a late fourth quarter game. Um, I'm going to just say maybe 17 points each ask for the Tigers. Give them 34. Defense... Um, We'll go 17, 34-17. Florida State's going to get some points. Um, obviously, Clemson just wants to come away with the win, but my heart would enjoy it much better if it's not quite a one-possession game. So We'll see. Uh, this is another chance for Clemson to make a statement, uh, another national TV game. A lot of some folks walk, watching, you know, lots of teams um, doing crazy things week by week. So, Clemson needs to go there, take care of business the rest of the way. Schedule gets a little bit easier outside of that Notre Dame game. So, huge game. A lot on the line. Um, we'll have everything covered for you guys all week long and up to and after kickoff. And hopefully Sunday we're talking about a 7-0 and Tiger team getting ready for, for homecoming next week. But stay tuned to the Clemson Insider for the most complete coverage of Clemson football.